Hello, kings and queens. Eray Taronic here, master weaver of mystery suspense thrillers, as well as broadcaster of astrology. First, I'd like to thank you for being here with me today, lending me your ears, your eyes, and your time. I know it is valuable. Therefore, I will be sharing valuable information with you that will help you to navigate the week's upcoming challenges, take advantage of the opportunities and assistance aspecting you, and even be able to look forward to the blessings coming your way. Now, I would love for you to help me to celebrate my birthday month by purchasing and reviewing my newest psychological thriller, Deadliest Intuition. If you like a thriller, it would definitely be a an honor to have you read and review mine. Um, and that would be a great birthday gift to see what you guys think. Now, Mentor Chatter Musings is spotlighting and honoring none other than author and creative artisan Latoya Chandler. Latoya Chandler is not only a brilliant writer, but she is a brilliant creator in general. Her products are unmatched, and I am a consumer of her, so I can attest to this. If you stop on by treasuresandspoils.com, you will see just what I'm talking about. Her candle line, her crystals. I mean, everything is just um, really exquisite. So I will be spotlighting her this month, going over her creations, um, her novels and things like that. So if you'd love to pick one up, you can stop by my page and definitely see the different ads and promotions for LaToya Chandler. Don't hesitate to stop by Diverse Shelves on Clubhouse. On Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can join the discussion to highlight new releases and find out about new releases that are coming out. I will definitely be there on Tuesday. Um, I quite enjoy the group, so don't hesitate to stop by Diverse Shelves on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I See You Reading and Chatting on Facebook always has Freestyle Fridays on Friday. If you'd like to participate as an artist, don't hesitate to contact Ebony Evans. She's the president of ICU Reading and Chatting Book Club. On Thursday, you can check out Diamonds World because they will be back at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with author Aubrey Penn discussing her series Indigo Haze. I believe they're going through books two and two through four. So if you've read this series, don't hesitate to join the discussion. Diane and Aubrey would love to see you there. Last but not least, be sure to check out the Intentional Life Club on Instagram. They have moved uh, the platform on Clubhouse uh, on a regular basis to Instagram. So don't hesitate to get with LaGio Hunt and the crew on the Intentional Life Morning Show if you intend to live an intentional life. <laughs> Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy your astrology and the tarot portion of your weekly reading. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It lets me know that you appreciate the content that I'm putting out. Hello, Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Rising Sign people. E. Ray Taronic here with the astrology portion of your reading for the week of October 31st, but this is going to be Thursday through Saturday, okay? And I'll attach the tarot from this week uh, uh, to the end. Now, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's get into it. On November the 4th, the sun is in Scorpio at 12 degrees. Uh, this is an area you trine, you know, you trine your area of romance, creative endeavors, and children. And that's what this is about, much of it. So this is a day where money could be made, but you have to do it in your solitude. Maybe you have to work in your solitude. Maybe you have to go make the money alone. But other people are going to be vying for your attention. This could even uh, say that travel is on the menu, you know, for you to garner said finances. 
Okay. Now, because this is your area of romance, creative endeavors, and children, you could be maybe even, um, you could be making money through a creative endeavor, but neglecting your children or your lover in some way, or neglecting your children and paying attention to your lover or neglecting your, you know, vice versa. It could be any of those things, but somebody feels neglected. Okay. Either way, because you're working in your solitude, trying to generate some type of finances. If you have placements between, I'd say a uh, nine and 15 degrees of Scorpio. Okay. Now, Thursday can be a trying day in it in its entirety, okay? Because the sun in Scorpio is going to oppose Uranus and Taurus at 12 degrees, eliminate, um, illuminating something shocking to you about friends, goals, and social groups, about the challenges you're having with your creativity, the challenges you're having maybe with a romantic partner or a child, and why you can't accomplish this this goal. OK, why your friends, you know, why you're having these these shocking clashes with your friends within your creative sphere or that you normally hang out with things being illuminated to you, something popping up there. Somebody could feel neglected due to your non action or you not interacting. OK, and that's going to be going on later on that night, too, because of the, the you know, that that opposition is still there. You know, so they could be speaking up that night about it. The moon in Scorpio will square Saturn in Aquarius at seven degrees. So a restriction or responsibility can be a challenge that morning as well. A restriction or responsibility because of a romantic partner or or due to a romantic partner because of a child or or um, pertaining to a child. I'm sorry. Or um because of a romantic partner or pertaining to a romantic partner or even a creative relationship or one of your friends, you know, that you hang out with some restriction or responsibility is placed there. And it has to do with shared finances, endings, new beginnings, things you're passionate about. If you want to generate this money, you got to risk this. You got to, you got to, you know, balance it out with this. You got to lose this to gain this different things like that. You got to take these restrictions or these responsibilities to go or the blessings. If you have placements in Scorpio or Aquarius between four and 10 degrees, this is definitely aspecting for you. Something is hindering you from accomplishing a goal, whether it's jealousy, whether it's money motives, whether it's, you know, something making someone else uncomfortable, whether a lover, a child, or someone within a creative sphere is uncomfortable about something, you know, it's, it's causing some type of blockages or restriction or, you know, to be placed upon you or the, or that area. Now in the evening, the moon and the sun at 12 degrees Scorpio will oppose Uranus and Taurus. So the moon and Scorpio will oppose at that 12 degrees. Remember when I was talking about that, I said that night, the conflict could come to a boil and someone could express how, how neglected they feel or how they're, why they're feeling neglected. And it could surprise you like, whoa, I didn't even know I made you feel like that, but you did, <laughs> you did cancer. Now, um, on November the 4th, the new moon in uh, Scorpio at 12 degrees is going to already be aspecting. You can already feel it now. OK, now at the same time that the new moon is moving over into uh, uh, Scorpio at 12 degrees, um, we're also around that time while we're feeling those energies, you're going to have Mercury move into Scorpio as well. And you're the people that are going to feel Mercury move into Scorpio are going to feel the communication rushing through and, and, and ro with romantic partners, with children and regarding creative endeavors or play. Okay. If you have placements between zero and three degrees, okay. People for the next 30 days, starting on the fifth on Friday, you'll feel it. You know, once it comes across your nose, if you don't feel it right away. Now, at the same time, through half of this, we're going through that same new moon opportunities and assistance coming. That's starting on the 4th. OK, so I want to talk to you about what Mercury is going to bring for the next 30 days, starting on the 5th and what the new moon is going to bring for the next two weeks, starting on the 4th. 
Okay, for the new moon, if you have any placements between nine and 15 degrees of Scorpio or any of the of the other signs that I name, you're going to feel this initially. You're already feeling this, you know, while I'm doing this video. Okay, so first of all, this is a time for you to make money, but you're going to have to work in your solitude. You could have to travel for it. Communication is going to start coming in regarding, you know, shared finances, indies, new beginnings, things you're passionate about. Um, um, and as it pertains to romance, creative endeavors and children. OK, so it's going to bring you over this this period of basically this next month, new opportunities and assistance to to start relationships, uh, new uh, friends and associates, you know, kind of thing, because it's people you would hang out and have fun with. Re uh, relationships with your children, new relationships with your children are transforming the relationship with your children and your lover. You have opportunities to go out with your romantic partner or meet people if you're single around you in the, the locale or neighborhoods around you. Your siblings, communication, networks of people and short distance travel are avenues of opportunity and assistance for you and your lover, you and your child, or you uh, wanting to even express your creativity. Okay. That's available for you and new relationships are as well. Now you'll be bringing in blessings being communicated to you. Okay. And being offered to you as it pertains to things at a distance from you. These are people that don't that aren't even by you that are that you're pulling in. You're pulling in people at a distance from you. You're pulling in people with your education and skills, what you think and preach. You know, your mojo is a really garnering some favorable communication coming your way. The only thing you really have to worry about is overspending. Bills popping up that have to do with your romantic partner, your children, or for play. You overdoing it, it you know, with spending money and, and consequently depleting your personal finances and resources. So you want to be mindful of that, okay? Um, hopefully none of your kids are taking money from you or anything like that because that's that area of Scorpio. It could be deceptive, especially when it's clashing with um you know money <laughs> so you know just be mindful of that all right now on let me see so you'll be going through all, all of those things for the next did i do opportunities i did the clash okay so starting on friday let's talk about friday even though we talked about what mercury what you're going to get from mercury let's talk about the other transits on friday the sun is in Scorpio at 13 degrees and that says don't tell anyone your business or whatever you have going on in the area of sheer finances, endings, new beginnings, things you're passionate about or whatever Scorpio is for you in your chart if you're looking at your chart. Okay, I know a lot of my people, I'm I'm prompting you to have your chart. I'm urging you to have your chart so we can do this together and you can see how to help yourself. Okay, but anyway, you could be taken advantage of. And it could have to do with a romantic partner taking advantage of you, a child or someone in a creative sphere. And they're most likely taking advantage of you because of something you're passionate about. They're taking advantage of you where it has to do with sex and intimacy or they're taking advantage of you where it has to do with finances. So be very mindful of that if you have placements in Scorpio, Leo or Aquarius between 11 and 16 degrees. No, between 10 and 16 degrees because you don't want to get duped. OK, now you could dream up something that's a blessing early in the morning with Neptune and Pisces trining the moon in Scorpio at 20 degrees. This would be about, you know, this would be about uh, you with your with your what you think and what you preach your education and skills, things at a distance from you. You could be really dreaming something up great or utilizing your creative talents and seeing some sort of blessing, utilizing your talents with your children or your your lover, you know, using your skills to garner some type of blessing with them. OK, where you've been blocked, it's being released, especially if you've been blocked because of your own laziness or inaction. You have this blessing coming in that is um, releasing a blockage. Now, the moon in Scorpio also on Friday will square Jupiter and Aquarius 
at 22 degrees. So an issue crops up due to maybe even a rivalry where there is now assistance and opportunity because those areas naturally square each other. You and home and or not you and home and family. I'm sorry. Uh, romance, creative endeavors and children automatically squares your shared finances. You're always overdoing it for children. You know, things you're passionate about. You feel very passionate about your lover and your children and your creative endeavors, you know? So now you, you, so with that clash, you can get into it with people, but now with Jupiter's there, it's bringing you a lucky opportunity or assistance to overcome that. And if you have placements in Scorpio or Aquarius between 19 and 20, five degrees, you can expect this blessing or this lucky assistance or opportunity to be coming for you on Friday. Now, around 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon and Vesta, the moon and Vesta in Scorpio at 24 degrees is going to sextile Pluto and Capricorn. So opportunities and assistance is coming to you because of your relationships, because of their devotion to you, whether it's a romantic partner, a child or a friend in a creative sphere. If you have placements in Scorpio or Capricorn between 21 and 27 degrees, this is aspecting you to receive some type of opportunity or assistance because the courage you've shown or maybe even the dangerous situations you've braved okay now on november the uh, 5th also friday Venus is moving into Capricorn and this is a day where you really want to pay attention to your intuition and insight to assess what's being said or brought to your attention OK, that's very, very important. Remember, we talked about that counterfeit stuff and fake stuff already. Make sure you're looking into things. And if you're in a monogamous relationship, avoid taking on another relationship. OK, this has to do with romance, finances and pleasure coming to your area of relationships. Your relationships are showing up for you and helping you to garner money pleasurable times and even romantic partners so be very very mindful of that you could your romance you and your romantic partner can garner instant opportunities and things like that to make money even so let's talk about what you're going to experience starting on the 30th for the next 30 days as it pertains to your relationships what you think, what you preach, education and skills, you're going to be pulling people in at a distance from you because of that. And they're wanting to partner with you because of your creativity. They're wanting to partner with you as a lover. They're wanting to partner with you. You know, your, your children are wanting to partner with you because of what you think and preach even, you know, so all of these uh, placements are, are aspecting you for you to garner some type of goodness, you know, some love, some goodness good times in that area, okay? Now, as far as the blessings, your blessings are gonna be communicated to you through siblings, through neighbors, through your networks of people. During short distance travel, you'll have opportunities to pair and, and start relationships with people. You'll also have opportunities to start relationships with um, new friends, you know, people in new social groups accomplishing goals that you want to accomplish through your relationships. Okay, so that's coming for you as well for the next 30 days with Venus is there. Like I said, the people at the, zero, from zero to three degrees are going to feel this off rip. Other people are going to feel it as the planet Venus moves closer to your nodes. When it gets within three degrees of your degree, then it's going to be aspecting you. OK, now, as far as your friction and relationships, those are going to be all in career or home and family. I wouldn't worry too much about the career and whatever it is you master because Chiron is there healing that area anyway. But as far as your home and family, you really could have some issues with your relationships there in home and family that you're kind of clashing with. So just be mindful of that happening for the next 30 days, starting on the 5th. OK, maybe you're even overdoing it in those areas, you know, or trying to overcompensate in some way. Way. Be honest with yourself and look into that. Now, on Saturday the 5th, I mean, Saturday the 6th, that's a day where you are prompted to not play the blame game or the victim role. Make sure you put yourself uh, work, you know, put yourself to work and don't pick the easy way out. OK, copying other people's work, plagiarizing, you know, make sure if you're turning something in, you got a copy written, you got your watermark on there. You got something that's saying that it's created by you. So you don't 
lose out on any deals okay now the moon in sagittarius at seven degrees will sex house oh this that that sun is at 14 degrees so if you have placements between 11 and 17 degrees of scorpio and i would say even leo or aquarius because those are the areas that square those areas you know so you could find yourself uh at a loss with a romantic partner a child or someone within a creative sphere as it pertains to money as it pertains to shared finances, resources, things you're passionate about. You really want to watch it there because somebody could be giving you some fake money, some counterfeit money, lying to you about money, hiding money from you. Something is going on with some money, a lover, a child, or someone in the creative sphere, especially if you have placements in Leo, Aquarius, or Scorpio between 11 and 17 degrees. You might want to start asking some questions, okay? Now, the moon in Sagittarius at seven degrees will sextile Saturn in Aquarius at seven degrees. So if you have placements between four and 10 degrees of Sagittarius or Aquarius, this is aspecting you to see some type of, um, I would say, opportunity or assistance, but it's going to place some type of restriction or responsibility on you as it pertains to your shared finances, as it pertains to endings and beginnings, new beginnings you want to create. You want to create a new beginning. You got to take this and give up that uh, sex and intimacy, things that you're passionate about. And you have luck there as well, helping you out, as I said. So it's bringing you some type of, you know, it, it could be bringing you some luck with that as well. Now, that opportunity or assistance is going to have to do with you being of service to other people, you working. Maybe it has to do with your health and things you're passionate about. Either way, some, some restriction or responsibility is being placed on you if you have placements between 4 and 10 degrees of Sagittarius or Aquarius. Make sure you ask yourself, because this is this could be where you're making a decision where you've been putting something off or ignored something. Now, you have to ask what restriction comes with it. Could you get put, put in your solitude too long? Could you get locked up? What responsibilities will weigh on you? Ask yourself these questions before you accept this offer. The new moon in Sagittarius will trine Chiron and Aries at nine degrees, bringing uh, some type of blessing of healing to your area of work, health, daily routines, and where you are of service to others. And the healing is coming through career. So you're working on something that you master. All right. But it's opposing secret sacrifice and solitude. So you're either having to sit in your solitude for a long time. It's a secret that you're keeping from other people, you know, or maybe it's something you have to keep secret. You have to keep under wraps. If you have any placements between 6 and 12 degrees of Sagittarius, Gemini, or Aries, be very mindful of paying attention to what's brought to you. Consider every perspective, every side of the coin, because healing is coming where someone has been, you know, shown courage, but the success can be short-lived and turn into future catastrophic losses. If you have placements between 6 and 12 degrees, remember I was talking about that other opportunity. And it's, uh, and it's imposing or squaring your areas of shared finances and personal finances. So like I said, somebody could be giving you some counterfeit resources or something like that. And you wind up at a loss in the end. You want to be careful what you're saying yes to. OK, at the same time on Saturday, Sagittarius is going to be squaring a palace in Pisces. So if you have placements between six and 12 degrees of Sagittarius or Pisces, you've got something going on with work, health, daily routines and where you are of service to others, where it's clashing with your talents, where it's clashing with people at a distance from you. You know, something is going on there. I don't really feel good about this opportunity, but if you do, that's up to you. Just make sure it's what you really want, Cancer. Okay. God bless you. Like the channel, sub uh, subscribe, subscribe to the channel, like the video and uh, stay, stay tuned for your tarot portion. Bless you guys. Bye now. Hello, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising Sign people. Eure Taronic here with your tarot messages for the week of October 31st, 2021. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. It lets me know you appreciate the content I am putting out. Okay, so let's start with your week. Now, your week is permeated by the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands talks about being a hard worker. The Queen of Wands talks about being, um, I would say, warm, determined, uh, thoughtful. Um, 
sensitive, a person that's sensitive to the feelings of others, maybe even someone who lends some type of wisdom or, or support is aspecting you this week. But this is what this is about. If you're not the Queen of Wands, you're dealing with a Queen of Wands this week. Now, the Queen of Wands could be a, um, like I said, she's a thoughtful, hard worker. It could be a Leo, Aries, or Sagittarius, uh, some on a rising sign person. Um, or you could be uh, a Leo, Aries, or Sagittarius, moon, or rising sign person. So let's talk about what we got here. Your first set of cards is the Eight of Swords. The Four of Swords and the Two of Wands. So the Eight of Swords is about you being in some type of imprisonment or denial or mental imprisonment. It, it's really self-imposed, though. You know, you've got yourself in this mental imprisonment because you choose to, um, you know, either be in denial or you choose to find a way out of your emotional lethargy. Maybe you lack st the strength to facing up to a situation, you know, like I say, you rather be in denial, but you're contemplating, you know, it looks like you feel imprisoned or bonded, like you're in a state of weight or contemplation. Um, you could be recuperating from an illness, you know, and you want to forge forward and, you know, plan things for the future, but you can't. Um, other than that, it's just like you're in a state of waiting you're in a state of waiting and it's making you feel imprisoned it's making you feel like you cannot move forward like you cannot progress like you can't make plans for the future and make decisions especially about finances because you feel like you are waiting for something to come in or you're stuck okay now you also have the uh, the second situation is where you have the nine of pentacles. So you have some type of luxury or money aspecting from a new beginning with someone. This could be a Scorpio, some moon or rising sign person, or this could be just a new journey coming through where something has ended, something new comes to the table and it at, and it brings about this nine of pentacles energy, this feeling of luxury and abundance. Um the nine of pentacles in your energy is also about gratitude. You know, you could have some type of gratitude because of an ending and a new journey coming about, but, um, hmm. It's just a time because of this new beginning where you can treat yourself to some type of luxury. Maybe it's because of this, um, this queen of wands we're talking about, um, in the picture. Okay. Um, now, you've got the five, the last scenario, you've got the five of wands with the queen of swords and the seven of staff, uh, seven of wands. So you're having some type of competition, some type of fight or disagreement about you being vested in your own interest, where you want to be vested in your own interest and you're submitting yourself at the top of a hill. Um, in persevering through something, um, you know, over a long stretch of time where you want to be vested in your own interests. Um, and it could be as it pertains to this queen of wands person or you as a queen of wands being invested in your hard work. Um, yeah, it, uh, the queen of, queen of swords is about business too. You know, it, when it comes to business, she is only about what, you know, is important to her. You know, she, she protects her, her own interests in business. Okay. Now your challenge and advice are permeated by the nine of cups. The nine of cups is about a wish fulfillment coming in. Now your challenge is some type of money offer. You're, you're looking at the cups that have spilled over instead of paying attention to the two cups that are behind you. Okay. There's either some, you're looking at the cups that are spilled over. Okay. Either the cups that are spilled over and it's causing you um, this regret or sadness because this offer of money or finances uh, that has to do with a lover or a business opportunity. Maybe you're looking at where some cups have spilled over with this business opportunity that had to do with money. Or you're not looking at the cups that are behind you where you have other opportunities to partner with people and to make uh, money and finances coming in. 
Okay. Now your advice is to focus on your happy family, what you've invested in your happy family. Okay. And your happy family's investments, you know, what you've invested in your happiness. It doesn't even have to be a family. Some people's happiness is not a family and a picket fence. It could just be, you know, them having their apartment and driving a Ferrari, who knows, but you're looking at what you have invested in that. And the wheel is turning in your favor to a wish fulfillment. That's what you should focus on. Not the cups that have spilled over with this other business partnership or, um, or, or a lover situation, this financial situation that you have as, aspecting. Because even if you have something aspecting, it's still prompting you not to overspend even if you have something aspecting. Because you don't you you just have to be very careful um with your you know your finances. All right. Um you know don't be wasteful. That's what I have for you. Like the video subscribe to the channel. God bless you guys. And I'll see you next week. Bye now.